we did begin a series about attendance um, in uh, maybe, well, ironically, it was last Sunday morning <laughs> uh, before our son obtained a, an, uh, obtained emergency case of appendicitis and we did not attend that afternoon. <laughs> But uh, we will continue in the lesson. <clears throat> which is really about what is stopping you. Uh, you know, what keeps you from serving? What keeps you from, from coming? Um, and we talked, you know, I'm, I might remind you, about the paraplegic in Mark 2 who was brought to Jesus on a pallet by four friends. And, uh, you know, it was pretty hard to keep him from, from, from coming. And that was before the miracle. That was just when Jesus was teaching. <clears throat> they wanted to be with him. They wanted to hear him so badly that even when he was teaching, they went to the trouble of opening the roof and lowering their friend on a pallet to Jesus so he could hear. He was pretty hard to stop. We also looked in Malachi 1 about, at the priests and the offerings that they were making and the things that they were really doing uh, by giving God less than the best, by failing to show God uh, his honor as a father, his fear uh, as a master. If he is the master, shouldn't we be afraid of him being displeased with our choices kind of idea? If he is our father, if we say he is our father, shouldn't we honor him with our service? And does it honor him when I don't attend? Um, it depends. There may be a reason that you cannot attend if you have a communicable disease, for example. It is glory to the Father that you do not bring that and share that with your brothers and sisters who may be uh, subject to severe illness or even death. That may actually be the case. But there are lots of other reasons that people don't come sometimes, and uh, it may be harder to make the case that those somehow glorify God. We talked also in Hebrews 8 about the fact that in the New Testament, as opposed to Malachi 1, we are spiritual priests, but we are under a new covenant, a new agreement with God, with better promises, and a better Savior, a better mediator on our behalf. And this means... If the priests were held to account in Malachi 1 in this way, how much more we who offer spiritual sacrifices, Romans 12, 1, of right living to him. And also, the great thing, I, I would say, the, the greatest thing about that passage in Hebrews 8, <clears throat> the 12th verse, I will be merciful to their iniquities, I will remember their sins no more. Their, our covenant is so much better because we can be forgiven. So you're not coming, if you will, to the worship of God, to the service of the Lord, uh, you know, for your weekly beatdown. <laughs> to be mistreated and, and maligned and falsely accused. Um, you know, I mean, we can do that if you want. Just let us know. There's probably a sign-up sheet. But really, that's not what the church is for. <laughs> That's not what you're doing. You are coming here because uh, you worship God and you serve God and you know that that's, that's what he wants for his people is to assemble and to give him thanks and praise and glorify him in this way. And you know too that because of this, we will obtain from him mercy, mercy that was not available under the law of Moses. We have a much better agreement. All right, so... Today, we speak, and I promised this was a short one, and I think that that promise will be kept, Mark chapter 5, about a woman who breaks through. Still in the context, thinking to ourselves topically, how do you 
you know, how do you attend regularly? How is your attendance? Is it regular? And is it regularly, you know, here <laughs> with the saints? Um, and, you know, as I think about that, the assembly, again, an assembly is being called out of your private uh, place of residence out into the public place of meeting. So you're not assembled, if, if you will, if you're watching um, online, if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Zoom. It's great to do. We do that and go to a lot of trouble, frankly, to make that happen because we think it's encouraging and beneficial to people who are stuck at home and would like to be with the, with the saints. They can at least sing along with the songs and pray along with the prayers and and get a good nap in during the sermon um you know without having to be embarrassed by that or caught no <laughs> all right all right i caught some people paying attention mark 5 though um does not require an assembly what this is about is that how you even though you assemble are doing something individually. And what we're talking about is this account, which begins in verse 25. There was a woman who had had a discharge of blood going on 12 years. And this goes all the way down to 34, by the way. It's Mark 5, 25 to 34. This woman has been suffering discharge of blood for 12 years. That is a lot of iron. This woman is very weak. She is hurting, okay? She suffered much under many physicians, we are told, and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. This can happen. We do not dislike doctors. As uh, Malcolm prayed earlier, we give thanks very much that we had access to excellent care, for our son at his uh, urgent need. But the fact is, they're only human, and they can only do so much, and the current state of knowledge can only address so many things. We, other things we maybe don't know how to do or don't know how to do well. So yes, she suffered much, Many different physicians had taken a, an approach to deal with this, but nothing had worked, and she's out of money. Which typically means you're stuck. But she heard reports about Jesus, which is one of the things that the gospel goes to pains to tell you prior to this in Mark 5. Earlier in Mark, he goes to the trouble to tell you how that the fame of the Lord is spreading all over uh, the country, in Judah, Israel, such as it is, but also to the neighboring uh, Gentile countries, the ten cities, Decapolis, and other things like this. So this woman heard the reports, and she shows up to see if she can get healing. He came up, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. So... There's a large group of people about the Lord. One of the things you read in the Gospels is that he asks his disciples to prepare a boat and push offshore a little bit because he was being crushed from all sides by the crowd. So you get this picture in your mind. She shows up, and that's what it looks like, but she sneaks, if you will, behind where she's not going to draw attention and it's not going to be noticed so that she can touch his garment, that is, you know, the, the, uh, they would wear cloaks. So something long, something not, you know, not so close, but close. Why does she do this? Because she said in her heart, Mark 5, 28, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Now that is faith. She knew that he had the ability to heal. But this is real faith that he doesn't have to know about it. He doesn't have to be bothered with it. All I've got to do is touch the, the garment 
and I will be better. That's all it's going to take. She does. She has faith that she doesn't have to ask him. She doesn't have to put him to trouble, to touch her, to bless her, to do anything. If she can just get a finger on that cloak, that will be enough to heal her. And she's right. Immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body she was healed of her disease. Now, the other thing that I find interesting in Mark 5.28 is she worked her way through the crowd with all that weakness and, I mean, with all that iron deficiency, 12 years of iron deficiency. And she worked her way through the crowd to get close enough to just to lay a finger on the hem of a garment. How does it relate to attendance? Right here. How close do you want to be to the Lord? Now, I don't say this in the Catholic sense of this is a holy place and God is in it and not, you know, outside the window here, but inside the window he is. You know, no, 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 no. But truly, in worship, we commune with him. And the Lord's Supper is a communion with him, a sharing with him. We, we come together. So yes, worship is coming close to God, not in proximity, not in, in place, it, it, but in spirit. And again, the question is, how close do you want to be? What are your needs in the spirit? And are they being met? And what do you need to meet them? If she just said, I, all I got to do is touch the hem of the garment, she was right. That was enough power to heal her. That's because she had faith. She trusted him. But also, she had to go. She had to get through the crowd. She had to get a hand out there. There's effort involved in assembling. She got out of her place and came here into public where everybody is gathered. And that is how she got healing. So how close do you want to be? How close do you need to be to be right with him? Well, she's healed immediately, of course, because this is Jesus we're talking about. But then in Mark 5.30, Jesus, perceiving in himself power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd. That is, he turned around right away. Who touched my garments? <laughs> you know, busted. <laughs> you thought you would touch the garment and be healed and just walk away, not have to bother him, but no, busted. He immediately did a 180 and said, who touched my garments? Now, this is an interesting question. The disciples, his disciples, probably the 12, said to him, well, you see the crowd pressing around you. You know, you asked us to put you on a boat so they wouldn't crush you one time. How can you ask who touched me? This is interesting. It's an interesting question. It's true he's being pressed. He's being thronged by the crowd, right? But suddenly, <laughs> with all, the, all of these hangers on, all of the throngers here in the mosh pit. No, it's not a mosh pit, but you know. All this stuff going on, whatever's happening there may, may or may not have been orderly. People are coming for all kinds of reasons, I'm sure. Whatever that may be, somebody touched him. And it wasn't everybody who touched him. That's the point. They're all there. They're all in proximity. As the disciple said, look around. The crowd is pressing in on you. Like if you're in the middle of this and you turn around and say, somebody touched my garment. Well, yeah, about a dozen of them touched your garment in the last, you know, 15 seconds at least. So why, why this question? What is he asking? You see, this is the point of worship, of coming together. There is a bunch of people present, but there was only one who touched him. That was the person who came here with faith and with purpose. 
and reached out to the Lord. Right? We asked, how close do you want to be? She, had, she wanted to get close enough just to touch the garment. That's good enough. But really, what we should ask is, how close do you need to be? Because everybody was there. Everybody was touching him. <clears throat> But only one really touched him. Only this woman. She was notable. So he looked around to see who had done it. Mark 5.32 I think that's pretty fun. <laughs> because you and I know that he already knows this. It's for our benefit that he does this. Back in Mark chapter 3 when he was in the synagogue with the man that had a withered hand, he was healing the man's hand behind his back. And he asked the crowd in the synagogue, remember? Is it right to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? And he looked around at them all. That's Mark 3, 5. He's in the synagogue. He's doing this round robin. Who is going to stand up for the truth here? Anybody? Any takers? And that's what he did. And he was grieved at their hardness of heart. But here, she has been healed and he knows it. And she's back here and he knows it. Turns around, looks to see who had done it. But this time, somebody comes forward. Right? The woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling. Why? Because, as the Lord said in Malachi 1, if I am a master, where is my fear? He is a master. That's why. You should be afraid. She came in fear and trembling and fell down before him, afraid that he might be mad. <laughs> or she might have done something wrong, been, uh, you know, not, not done the right thing, you know, not approached him. It's reasonable and appropriate. But she fell down before him and told him the whole truth. This is what has happened. This is what I did. This is why I did it, right? And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your disease. <laughs> she had faith. And because of that, she touched Jesus. And because of that, she was made well. And because of that, she goes in peace. Right? Don't you want to go in peace? I mean, I do. You, leave, you come together with the saints, with the people of God. Don't you want to go away from there in peace? Knowing that you you are right with God, you are living right, God is pleased with your choices and, and your resolve to do his will, and you have given thanks appropriately and you have worshipped appropriately. Don't you want to go in peace? I want to go in peace. Uh, yeah, I argued, argued with myself about the example, but I'm going to do it anyway. Seinfeld, the comedian, has this routine about why do we wash towels? <laughs> you just got out of the shower. They couldn't get any cleaner than they are. <laughs> There's nothing on you. Why are we washing them? Right? And it's just the whole idea of... <laughs> yeah, I would like to think that this is the fresh start here. This is not, I'm walking away with baggage. I'm walking away with things that need to be dealt with, with confessions I need to make, repentance I need to do. No, you, you're not. This is the, you just got out of the shower, in some sense. You're going in peace because you've worshipped acceptably, but you've also taken that time, you know, to think. When you take the Lord's Supper, you examine yourself. Right? There's, there's thought in this. You, if there's something that's amiss, 
as a Christian, you know, as a child of God, if something is amiss, you should deal with it. If there's some question or something that's bothering you, you're afraid is a sin, answer it. And answer it immediately, if possible. Why put something like that off? If you're, you're concerned about something you have done, repent. Repent. Change your heart. Resolve to do his will. And know that our God is merciful and that our covenant is better and that he wants to forgive you and that he will. And you can go your way in peace because you are at peace with God in the Spirit. You are forgiven. And if you aren't a child of God, if you are not a Christian, you can still go in peace if you become one today. We today are ready to help you to obey the gospel of Jesus, to be baptized in the name of Christ for forgiveness of sins. If you change your heart and put God first, you can go your way in peace. And yeah, there, there's going to be trouble in the world. The devil's never happy about a new Christian. <laughs> He's not happy about old ones that are faithful either. But yeah, there's going to be trouble. But you still go in peace because you're right with God. And, it, you know, for those of us who have obeyed the gospel, try to remember what that was like when you did obey the gospel. Remember that you could walk in peace, unafraid, because you were forgiven. You knew you were forgiven. You were right with God. That state can be yours in Jesus every day. If you will approach him in repentance and in simple, trusting faith, like the woman who touched Jesus in Mark 5. So again, if today you are not a Christian, become a Christian. Be at peace with God. If today you are a Christian, but have not been living right, repent and be at peace with God. If something is amiss between you and your brethren, Go to them. Go to somebody, whoever it is that you have a problem or a question or an issue with. Go with. Go talk with them. Don't let that fester. Be at peace so you can go your way and do the work of God out there in the world where you are needed. If we can help you with our prayers, if we can help you to obey the gospel, please let your need be known by coming to the front while we stand and sing the song selected.